Good evening, and welcome to Real Talk, where every Sunday night we offer insight, education, and resources to the in-home caregivers and those that are affected in their world. This is the children, the parents, the extended families, and everyone else they touch. Our goal is to offer real-life topics and learning through discussing real issues and offering real solutions. Tonight, I am very excited to welcome our guest, Stacey Steelman. I have had the great pleasure of working for several years with Stacy on the board of the INA, so I've gotten that to opportunity to really know her pretty well, and I know how passionate she is about excellence in the industry and really professionalizing the experience, both for the families and the nannies that are involved in our industry. She has an amazing background with experience as a financial recruiter in human resources, a whole variety of things, and as a parent and as an agency owner. And if you want to learn more about Stacy and her background, you can take a look at her bio, which is in the feed. Um, but right now, I want to talk to Stacy specifically about a couple of really great things that she's doing. Um, but first off, I want to say welcome, Stacy. We're really excited to have you tonight. Thanks, Tanya. I always love seeing you. It's so good to be here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So before we kind of delve into our topic, I would love for our audience to get to know a little bit more about you. So can you, you know, share something fun or something exciting? What's one of your passions outside the industry? So one of my greatest passions outside of the industry are my three children. I have three boys, ages uh, 14, 11, and 9. They are all consuming. They take up so much of my life. Um, and I love the time that I get to spend with them. I also am a crazy foodie. I love going to, and when we're not in a pandemic, I love going to new cities, going out to dinner, trying different types of food, um, traveling for for food and, you know, just experiencing a lot of different cultures and communities. So those are my my two favorite things outside of work. Um, I, I am an avid exerciser. I work out every single day, long walks, lots of yoga, working out on my TRX. Those are a little things, a, a couple of things about me outside of business. Yeah. And those are fun things that we can all relate to. You know, everybody in our industry in one form or another loves kids and who doesn't love good food. So <laughs> absolutely. Well, I should say, I should say, Tanya, and you pro and you know this about me, that I actually really only like my kids. So <laughs> <laughs> right. But I'm not the only parent that feels that way, I promise you. Yeah. So um you know, it's always interesting. People always assume that you must be super passionate about the, you know, education of children and other people's children. And I'm like, no, 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 no. When I started this company, my whole goal was to figure out how to support me through having, you know, an infant and being alone the majority of the time with an infant. And the whole, the whole purpose was to help me and to help figure out how I was going to solve my problem, you know, being a stay at home mom after working in corporate staffing for so many years. Um, so it, it's just totally ironic that I am not like you, Tanya, I am not the baby queen, but I am good <laughs> at helping people solve their problems. Yeah. And you know what? I love babies, but with it, with the exception of my kids, I don't like other kids that are older. Oh, so wow. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I love everybody's babies, but once they're older, I was actually worried about not even liking my own kids once they got older. So. That's great. <laughs> and so it might be true. Hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's kind of get into our topic tonight. Um, we're going to talk tonight kind of about one-on-one -on -one backup care. And to a lot of our audience, that might sound like, wait, what do you mean? That's like a business sort of thing. But we're actually going to talk about it from both the business and kind of the caregiver side. And kind of what working on a flexible, on-call basis 
looks like right now and kind of some of the things that you've developed around this. Um, so I would love to start with kind of you telling us how you as a business who employs and keeps a lot of people employed, kind of how this has affected you and kind of, you know, what your response was to what was going on in our world. So, um, so as you know, um, but many people don't, Crunch Care is a national childcare staffing company. Okay. So we place in-home care providers to private clients and to uh, companies that actually offer childcare as a benefit. Some companies might offer 30 days a year, some 90. Um, so we have people all throughout the field um, in California and New York at this time um, that are temporary employees with a flexible a work schedule where they actually pick and choose the shifts and the families that they'd like to work for. Um, so right now we, we're back up to about 175 employees across the country and um, business is uh, extremely demanding right now due to the childcare crisis with the pandemic. Um, and there are, have been many challenges, like for everybody else, associated to the business that we are in um, since March. Uh, 2019 was the best business year we ever had, um, and really very consistent and stable. And we saw a lot of growth uh, from 2016 to 2019. And then, boom, the middle of March hits. And frankly, I went up to see... Um, some associates uh, that I enjoy working with up in Seattle. Um, and I was headed to Seattle to eat food and to hang out with my agency friends. And it was the first week of March. And I remember just watching on the news what was going on and people were calling me and my family and they're like, are you sure you want to go to Seattle? And I was like, yeah, like, it's fine. I'm going, I'm getting, you know, I'm, I'm all about this trip. I wanted to go. And, um, I felt so weird traveling during that time, like getting to the airport, getting on the plane. Like it, at, when I, when I landed at SeaTac, I was standing in the airport, just kind of looking around, hoping that I wasn't getting, going to be exposed to coronavirus. But we really didn't know, you know, at that point, what was going to happen. So I wake up in the middle of the night in Seattle with a really terrible sore throat, not feeling good um, during the trip. Like I, we didn't quite understand the concept of what was going on. Um, so long and short, I come back. I'm not feeling great when I come back. And we have this complete shutdown. My kids are texting me from school. It's March 13th. He, my son's like, come get me, come get me. You know, the school's closing. And I said, um, I'll, I'll come get you when the school closes. Like, I still have two more hours here. But little did I know that the entire world was going to shut down and, you know, everything was going to be turned upside down. So for the first few weeks of March during the shutdown, um, we were extremely busy, uh, extremely busy, busier than we have ever been because of all of the schools closing. Um, and then orders kept coming in from the governor with modifications on what we could do and who we could service. So during the actual shutdown, we only serviced essential employees um, of companies like Stanford, um, Stanford Medical and Cedar Sinai in LA, um, large hospital organizations, and we serviced families that many of which were physicians out in the field, very high risk. And our our team knew that if they were taking a position, it was for an essential worker, and it was a real you know sacrifice from our team who was unbelievable. And we got you know there's a certain type of employee that wants to do that type of work, right? Like you look at first responders and ER docs and you know people who really put themselves out there. And in the care world, there are people who do the same thing. And we have learned a lot about those people during this time. So, so the first few weeks were crazy. You know, the numbers were blowing up. 
for our company. And then all of a sudden it, we had a real shutdown like everybody else. So the community of businesses in this industry um, had has been so strong through the pandemic and um, so connective for people and almost therapeutic for one another. And we were on webinar after webinar. And I just kind of got to thinking that it would be a really important time to collaborate with some of the top people in my industry who do exactly what I do because we were spending so much time talking as it as it is um, to collaborate on our, our, our services and you know say this is available for essential workers. We are here. We are we are still filling positions. We are trying to be as safe as possible and follow all the guidelines that the CDC is recommending. And we're trying to place one caregiver with one family. And that was the concept of um, a campaign that I started during the shutdown called the one to one campaign, where I sought out, you know, uh, several companies in our industry um, and, and I'll, I'll give a shout out to all of them because they're all amazing women. Um, we, you know, we have trusting connections in Arizona and Texas um, that is a big backup care company and also services private clients as well. Um, we have the Nanny Network in Baltimore and D.C., TLC in St. Louis and Miami and Atlanta and, and Charlotte. And there's many locations that they service. Um, we had the Sound Care Agency up in Seattle. Um, Mara and Tiffany were my friends who I was going to visit up in Seattle the first week of the shutdown. Um, and, and Wendy Sachs with the Philadelphia Nanny Network. So we we have these really bright women in the industry that I enjoy working with and hearing what their thoughts are on a regular basis. And we basically put our services together and said, you know, and branded it to the public and said, we cover 20 regions in the United States and we're here. And as the pandemic continues, we consult with one another and we modify, you know, our services depending on what is happening. Because as we all know, right now, everything is changing every few weeks, right? Kids are going to school. Kids are not going to school. You know, camps are open. Camps are not open. So we did a couple of really cool things together beside of service essential employees during the shutdown, like create a camp at home program, um, which was led by the Philadelphia Nanny Network the Philadelphia Nanny Network and um, and the Nanny Network out of Baltimore, D.C., and they created a 10-week program with curriculum for kids who weren't going to be able to go to camp for the summer. And then we uh, they also initiated the concept of school at home, which is in-person and remote learning support for families families who are homeschooling their kids like me. All three of my boys are, you know, here in in my home. This is my home office. And they're in their little offices in their rooms going to school. And, and the concept of having somebody dial in and help your child for one-on-one -on -one time or the concept of somebody coming to your home and teaching school are some of the different concepts that we've collaborated on as a consortium and really feel like we're trying to make an impact in the industry. So um, our employees, like everybody else, were rocked during this time. We had a lot of, we, we lost a lot of people who didn't want to come back to work under these conditions for health reasons. We also lost people because of other reasons, like, the, you know, hiring right now is a very difficult thing. So we've been greatly affected by you know, trying to find the right people to go out into the field and do this type of work right now in the recovery, which is kind of how we feel about what's going on right now. But we're prepared at any given point for another shutdown. So, you know, we're just trying to roll with it like everybody else, but make a positive difference. And um, and that was our response to the pandemic in this part of the world. Yeah. I know that you and I talked um, a few times during that time period when everything was like, what are we going to do? And 
I remember distinctly how passionate you were about protecting and providing for your team members and really looking at what's best for them. A lot of these people need to be working or want to be working and they want to be supporting the essential workers that are out there taking care of everybody else. And I remember so distinctly how passionate you were about A, providing as as safe a work environment as you possibly could for them um, and really stringent requirements that they needed to follow. But two, just several times you're saying, I want to make sure they get paid. I want to make sure they can pay their bills. I want to make sure they're taken care of. And that was huge. It's a, you know, there's so, there's so much pressure to do something positive and do something helpful, but be smart about it and be considerate and not pressure your staff and just kind of say, Hey, here's the situation. This is what it's going to be like to go out to work with a mask on your face every day. These are the, you know, these are the things that you need to do to maintain a sanitary environment. Um, You know, it's hard to put people out into the field doing this type of work, but you have to remember that they're servicing, even, you know, they're servicing big health organizations, but also you think about CVS pharmacy target, like all, these are the employees we were servicing during the shutdown. These are the companies that had crisis care um, and, and, and backup care available for their employees you know, via companies like Bright Horizons, right, which we're a subcontractor to. So it's it's definitely uh, been a really challenging environment for everybody, including myself. I mean, and there's no, um, there's no, you know, there's no good place to be during the pandemic. And there's no reprieve for anybody, really. I think everybody's feeling it on a day-to-day. Absolutely. So a lot of our audience are nannies, newborn care specialists, um, doulas, other caregivers. And many of them have been working, but a lot of them are out of work. And we know that circumstances around unemployment um, worked great for some people, didn't work for others, et cetera. So if somebody's thinking, hey, maybe this is a good way that I could do some work, I can earn some income during this time until hopefully things change and I can go back to regular work. If they want to work with a company like yours or with one of the other agencies that you've mentioned, because you said you service 20 different areas around the country, what does that look like for them? How do they get a hold of you? How does that kind of thing work? What's the process? So when we are, we're, we're always hiring, just so you know, um, and every company in our business right now that does what I do, including every single company in the consortium is aggressively hiring to rebuild our businesses and because demand is so great. So first and foremost, you know, there's a lot of hiring and rehiring going on in our specific industry because the demand is there. Um, When somebody wants to work for one of the one-to-one companies, they should visit the one-to-one childcare website. It's one-to-onechildcare.com. And you can get direct contact information to any of the companies in your region to reach out to. Um, and, and once you make contact, you, you know, be prepared, be prepared with a resume, be prepared with, uh, you know, an opening statement in your email about why you think this would be a good idea. And, and what is, what does it actually really look like today to do temporary work during this crisis? It looks like however you want it to look. That's the beauty of, working in a flexible workforce. You pick the positions that are desirable to you. Um, You create the, you know, whether that's location, number of children, family uh, composition, you know, number of kids, ages, this, that, you can, you can actually pick 
cherry pick your positions for the most part. And that's specific to Crunch Care, my company in the consortium. There are a couple of companies out of our group who do like auto scheduling, but you make your requests when you get hired on with a backup care company. So for example, if you were somebody who was like, I would like to be a private educator facilitator for one family for the entire school year, that that's the only type of case that I would consider. Then we have people who are doing traditional backup care, who are moving from home to home, following all the CDC guidelines of safety, wearing a mask to work every day. Um, you know, there are tons of people who are working in that rotation and, and managing to stay healthy. Um, I should say that, you know, we have had, a, we, you know, we are very diligent if somebody's not feeling well, that they don't go out in the field. So our cancellations tend to be a little bit higher, but uh, the most important thing is health and safety and taking no chances. So um, there is traditional backup care. There are there are circumstances where there are private education and you're with one family and you're helping the kids go to school online and really giving them some one-on-one -on -one attention. There are families that just need a long-term temporary nanny because aftercare is at capacity or closed in many cases and they don't have another resource to take care of their kids during the day. So our temporary nannies can be placed for months at a time with one family, or they can be rotating. Or, you know, So really, it's the choice of the care provider on what structure seems comfortable to them. And that's what that looks like. So when you, when you send a resume in, write a little bit about what you want to do you know, give us a little bit of information. We direct you to our recruiting department and they take it from there. They do a phone interview um, first and, and kind of get an idea if it's a good fit in terms of being a mutually beneficial relationship, right? And then if it is, we move forward into a Zoom interview. Um, we have a pretty rigid testing process. So we give a weighted test to evaluate childcare education and domestic skills. So we understand how much uh, each candidate that we hire, that we end up employing, how they rank um, compared to one another, um, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are. Um, you know, there's extensive reference checking. So always maintaining those relationships, those past relationships to us is a very important part of how we qualify and hire. Uh, you be prepared with your social media. Make sure it's nice and clean and buttoned up and private. Um, you know, our clients are always the first time, as soon as they get a resume of somebody coming out to work, they're Googling you. So it's really important that um, everything is nice and tight and not public. Um, the process usually for onboarding takes about a week if you're moving quickly through the process. All the paperwork is done online. Um, and, and I imagine everybody in our consortium right now is managing their hiring processes in a quite similar way. So there's, you know, not a mate, there's only one company in the consortium that builds out schedules completely, I believe, for their employees. But the application process, the qualification process, really understanding, you know, if it's a fit mutually is the most important part of our process. And, and then our staff helps you as you get get onboarded utilizing our scheduling software. Um, we actually literally just have an app that is on your phone where positions pop up. You look at the details of the position and you accept it or you don't. And that's how you can schedule yourself for work. And then you actually have a calendar built in your app with all of the cases you might have, and it syncs directly into our payroll system. So it's a pretty easy, seamless process. Everything is handled by direct deposit when it comes to payments. Our quality assurance team is always there um, for feedback on our families that we're servicing. Just as much as we take feedback from our clients, we um, from our client families, we take feedback from our care providers about the families that they're servicing and how, you know, what the work environment is like. So it's closely monitored. You're not just out there on your own. We have a feed internally 
that we communicate on um, and our care providers, you know, all across the country are chatting with each other. So it's a really nice culture and community to do backup care. It is a great option during this time. And it doesn't mean that you're going to be necessarily running from family to family unless that's something that you opt to do. You can carve it up whatever, you know, whichever way you like in, in what we do. And that's the beauty of that's really, truly the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like there's a lot of flexibility um, for people who might want to do this either as a temporary thing or they might decide they like this flexibility and they want to do this more long term. So we have amazing uh, women that work for us, one of which that we have amazing people that work for us, but specifically speaking about a couple of, of women that stand out over the years. Um, one is, is a woman that lives in San Francisco and she is probably in her sixties and she's such, she, she's just such a gem. And I think she came on board thinking it was going to be a little hobby that she dabbled in. And she ended up working like 55 hours a week for us in San Francisco and was one of our most requested people ever. She just, and, and family started, she built a, a small portfolio of clients that requested her over and over and over again. And she never knew how much fun she was going to have and how much she enjoyed the babies, right? And she would only take the cases with babies under six months old. And it was her passion. Hi, Tanya. Yeah. So um, it was her her passion. And I don't think that she anticipated it. Um, and, and she did resign during uh, the shutdown. And, and we were very supportive of her because she's her family was concerned about her being, you know, pounding the pavement out in the field working right now. But um, just because of some health issues and family issues and stuff like that. But I think the point is that you don't know what it going to feel like once you until you start to do it and you start to build rapport and relationships with people this is a relationship business the care providers that work the most for us are the care providers that actually extend themselves reach out and build rapport with their clients and 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 that's the consistency and stability in it and it is a beautiful thing to work flexible i like it's one of our main highlights of how we recruit. You can work as much or as little as you want. Fantastic. So it sounds like there are definitely some great opportunities. And this could be a really great resource for those who are out of work right now. Yeah, I, I we would love to be there for people who are wonderful with children. Usually we look for people with two years or more of experience Education backgrounds are wonderful. Um, we we definitely value and appreciate that, but we are 100% clear that this is a domestic position. So you're working in somebody's home. So you actually have to be a part of the household, no matter what, you know, you're always contributing to the tidiness and cleanliness of your workspace, especially during the pandemic. But education backgrounds are wonderful. Career nannies, we love career nannies. I mean, there are so many options and there are so many different positions right now. So I think just with that strong background, the desire to work and meet people who are also scared and also stressed, right? Our clients are no different than our care providers. Everybody is under an incredible amount of pressure and looking for the safest environment possible. Um, and we see it every day. Um, and if we have a case where we don't see it, we, we don't service that client. So it's important for um, people to know that that's a really big part of our culture, especially right now. It always has been a big part of our culture to really care about our workforce and our clients, but now more than ever from a safety standpoint. So I think the credentials that go along with a position like this are... Um, you know, just consistency, being reliable, being able to work with technology. That's an important part of um, accepting positions like this, through cases through our system and so forth. So I think that um, 
if you are looking for a job and you have these consistent qualities in your background, do not hesitate to reach out to any of the companies in our collaboration. Fantastic. And like you said, you service, um, you said 20 markets? On the yeah, list? So I'll list them off for you. Um, Miami, Tampa, Orlando, Charlotte, Chicago, St. Louis, Atlanta, Baltimore, D.C., um, New York, um, Tucson, Phoenix, DFW, Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, Seattle, and all of California, mm -hmm. and uh, Philadelphia, mm -hmm. and two of the companies in our consortium are in New York City, mine is, as well as the Philadelphia Nanny Network. So we've got lots of different location options for people wanting to find employment. I think the biggest thing for us right now is finding people who are really consistent and good communicators, right? Yeah. Because there's been so much inconsistency for these families to begin with. And it's and and there's just volatility all around us, right? In the hiring environment, the workforce. So it's it's a very challenging time. Right. So it sounds like you guys are essentially are covering almost all the major markets in the in the United States. So there's opportunities for people all over. Yes, there are. Absolutely. Is there anything else that you want to share with our audience tonight before we wrap up? I just, you know, I really appreciate you reaching out to me and giving us the opportunity to come and chat with you. Um, we are... We are just extremely grateful, honestly, to still be here for the families that we service and for the people that we employ. We are just extremely grateful under the circumstances. Every day, you know, we're hearing, oh, J. Cruz closing, oh, Victoria's Secrets shutting down a bunch of stores. And it's unbelievable to me that my company, Crunch Care, survived this time. Like I still am, you know, amazed. And I never thought that childcare was going to be such a significant part of the way. I mean, you, you, when I started this business many years ago, it was to meet my own need, like I said before, and to provide help to mothers like me, but you could never envision you know, 15 years later, being in a pandemic and providing childcare and what that actually means. I never understood how essential it truly was what we what we do. And I'm grateful to be doing it. I'm truly grateful. Yeah, absolutely. It is one of those things. I think as a country, and as a culture, we're starting to wake up to the essential, really, need and role that care quality care providers are do fill and are there for our kids yeah you know, so many of us I, I think it is it is um national nanny recognition week it i think is. that we should give a shout out to all of our nannies that are allowing us to be successful make allowing us to be who we can be because without them, like we would be, we would not be able to accomplish the things that we can as working parents. You know, there is just no way. And, and these, these women and men are out in the field every single day, giving everything they can to keep our world going. And I think people take that for granted. I really do. And I hope that that changes. I really hope that it's a positive result of yeah. this time. Yeah, I agree. I really think it is. And yeah, what a great way to wrap up National Nanny Recognition Week. Um, so thank you so much for joining us tonight on Real Talk, Stacey. If any of you are interested in learning about working with any of the agencies in the one-to-one -one program, all of that information is going to be in our feed. You can reach out to Stacy, or you can reach out to any of the others. Um, but it's really been an honor to have you on tonight and to get to talk with you about this because it's very clear that you are passionate about both taking care of the families and the care providers. So thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. Thanks, Tanya. It was fantastic to see you. Absolutely loved having you. So if you are in our audience and you have any questions for Stacy about this topic or getting a hold of any of the agencies that are involved in this or anything related to working with them, 
um, put those questions in the feed and either tag Stacy or just tag us. Make sure and alert Stacy and let her know that there are questions. And if you're watching this on replay and you want, or you want to catch any of our other Real Talk segments, you can access those on newbornCareSolutions.com and click on the education tab. Thank you for joining us tonight and have a great rest of your evening.